Hi friends! Are you ready to get your culinary minds blown? Get ready. We're making some very super sour sauerkraut soup today. Bowler style. Welcome back to my channel friends. This is Polisher Kitchen. My name is Anna. I am preparing super awesome soup today. Can't get any more Polish sauerkraut soup. I have all my ingredients prepared if you want to take a look. We're gonna start with our meats. I have pork ribs, bone-in. This is a small uh, rack. Polish racks are a little bit more narrow, I guess you could say. Uh, so I'm using a whole one. But if you're in America and your ribs are a little bit wider, you can use half or you can use a whole one also. And just make it a little bit more meaty. I also have some delicious smoked bacon sliced. Uh, you can get long slices also like they come pre-packaged. Just get a good quality smoked bacon. And then I have uh, diced onion, some uh, spices that I'll go into a little bit later, some veggies and very delicious sauerkraut that I'll talk about uh, here in a minute and some diced raw potatoes so we are gonna start by um, preparing our broth so cooking sauerkraut <clears throat> soup you have to remember that everything has to cook before the sauerkraut goes in because it will create this uh, the broth that sauerkraut creates doesn't always want to cook the veggies and meat really well. So that's why we're going to start with, uh, we're going to start with the meat and veggies and then we'll continue. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm heating my pan here. I'm putting in some oil, just a little bit on the bottom to help the bacon. Uh, since this one is nice and lean, it's not going to create a lot of fat for us. So I'm going to, I've added a little bit of foot uh, oil on the bottom. You can also do butter if you'd like. Just keep it on kind of lower setting so your butter's not burning before you put the bacon in there or it's not burning with the bacon. I'm just doing a rough chop. Uh, can you see my board? I'm just doing kind of uh, a, a larger dice. This is really nice and lean bacon as you can see. Poland is famous for producing pork and I know we export a lot of it all over the world. Maybe some of it gets to you too. So I have about three uh, thick cut bacon slices. And I'm going to start rendering the bacon in here. And as this goes, once this browns a little bit, I'm going to add the onion. But I want the bacon to go for a little bit because the onion doesn't need as much time. And in the meantime, I'm going to prep our, the rest of our ingredients. So if you are following my recipe, which I posted to my blog and the link is right below, uh, you can see that I'm using boxed stock, which is perfectly fine. But I don't have any today, so I'm gonna add a little bit more veggies to my broth to make it a little bit more flavorful. So I have a piece of leek, which I'm gonna um, slice. Uh, but I'm thinking what, if I wanna keep it whole or not. Since the soup is kinda thick, I can probably chop it, cause you won't see it. The leek kinda gets stringy once you boil it. But this is going to resemble our cabbage a lot, so I think I can afford to slice it. So I'm going to slice the leek. And again, if you're using a boxed stock, you can sk skip the leek and the parsley root and just go with the carrot. And carrot is going to give us a little bit more flavor and it's also going to uh, give us a nice color to the soup because the soup is kind of bland in color. We have a little bit of color from the meat, but I like the carrot in there to uh, kind of break up the monotony of just yellow and ingredients, I guess. 
Okay, so I have the leek here sliced. Give this one a stir. Mm. It's not good, eh? Mm -hmm. So this is my husband's, uh, one of his favorite soups, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. So I try not to make it a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm also slicing the carrot and I cut it in half and then into slices and that's going to give us nice flavor. If you're using boxed broth, look at the ingredients on the broth and get the one that kind of has root ve more root vegetables like celery root and carrots and uh, uh, parsley that kind of stuff instead of like the paprikas because I think even though that could probably work I'm not sure how this is gonna jive with the cabbage um, you can just as well do water-based broth with uh, just whatever veggies you have at home uh, Polish cooking is easy Utilize vegetables and stuff that you have at home that you can grow in your backyard and no fuss. So my, my bacon is kind of getting brown on the edges. Come over and see. So I'm at this point, the, some of the fat rendered out. So I'm going to add the onion and this is going to cook for a little bit longer. So we'll give the uh, bacon a chance to to cook off a little bit more and then all of this is going to go into our pot with soup so whatever fat is left on the bacon will just melt into our broth and give us more flavor so give this a couple of minutes and i'm almost done here with my carrot and then i'll talk to you about the sauerkraut so the thing with sauerkraut in America is you have to watch the ingredients on the can. You can very easily find one that is just pure sauerkraut that has been soured like it's supposed to, meaning just laying with a bunch of salt and, um, what do you, how do you say that? Fermenting. Fermenting, as bad as that may sound. <laughs> but that's how um, you create sauerkraut. It just kraut and salt and it sits there and it bubbles and it produces this gorgeous end product. Well there's a bunch of other stuff in some sauerkrauts like vinegar or things that will make it sour but not sour in natural state. Great probiotic. So just read the can and uh, get the one that is just sauerkraut and salt. If there's some other spices in it, like um, cumin or something, if you like that, that's okay. Did you have a question? Well, I was going to say that there's two huge differences in sauerkraut. One is a German style, and the German style is the one that has vinegar and stuff in it, and the, the cumin and things that you normally see on a bratwurst or something in the Northwest, like our Wisconsin. Whereas the natural sauerkraut you're talking about may be a little bit more difficult to find. It so. really isn't though. Okay. I, I mean, we've lived all over, the, all over America, and I was always able to find okay. sauerkraut. I was so. going to say, if you get the German style vinegar, I would rinse it better. Oh, That's then all I'm just don't get the one with vinegar. Okay. Uh, and, uh, see how I'm always right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm glad you mentioned rinsing. Uh, if you're a newbie sauerkraut eater, eater uh, consumer, you might want to rinse it. If you don't, if you're not sure you're gonna like the soup super sour, then you rinse it and squeeze out the water, and then that's what you would add to your soup. But I encourage you that you don't try it. Try making it the first time without rinsing. It will give. So much more flavor. Uh, I just dump everything, including the water that's in the jar or the bag, um, 
sauerkraut comes in plastic bags sometimes here in Poland. So I just dump the whole thing and it just is more flavor. So take a look at my onion and bacon mixture. This is probably as much as I want to go with it. So I'm going to just transfer it to my pot here. I have pot with water. That's going to be our broth and everything will go in here. So I'm dumping that in here. Don't want any onions left. So it's not burning in our pan because we're gonna do, um, next we're gonna do our ribs. So as I said, I have, this is pork ribs and I cut them into two rib sections. And if we go with ribs, uh, this is a very well-rounded meal. You can, this is first, first and second course all together, <laughs> meaning soup and meat and potatoes and you don't have to worry about doing anything else. I'm just gonna sprinkle it with a little bit of pepper first and then a little bit of salt. And I'm gonna saute it in my pan here. A little bit of salt. And once they brown on each side, or mainly on the meat side, the, the bone side is a little bit harder to get, but we'll try to get it as much as possible. Then we'll pop it into our broth and it'll cook up a little bit. Uh, this recipe for the soup you can also use if you have leftover ham bone after Easter. There's still plenty of flavor in the ham bone, but not much meat, but it would give us plenty of flavor for the soup. You can even pick off the ham afterwards. So I'm gonna just add these pieces into here. And again, we're not trying to cook this all the way through. You just want a little color. There, I'll let this go and we can chat about something else. How do you like my new setup? I got a great camping stove so I can face you and see you and talk to you, look you in the eye. Isn't it nice? Leave me a comment below. I have a parsnip yet, not parsnip. I keep doing this. Parsley root that I'm gonna slice and that's also gonna go in my broth. And I have the broth on in the back on my stove. So I'm going to add all these veggies in there also. And let this come in, let this come together. So I'm putting carrots and the sliced uh, leek and the sliced parsley root into my soup. I have two quarts of water in my pot. And into my pot also, I will add, I have three bay leaves, the Polish savory cooking trio uh, bay leaves, and I have um, allspice berries. Those are the, these larger guys. And then I have peppercorns. And normally I just Grab a pinch, whatever I grab goes in the soup. So that will go in here. It'll make a nice, um, nice broth for us. And at the end, we'll finish our soup off with marjoram. Also one of Poland's favorite uh, savory spices. I will make this to the side. There we go. Um, the recipe that you will see on my page, um, I, I noted on the bottom that you don't have to add potatoes to it, and it's true, some chefs, home chefs don't. Uh, sometimes I do. Uh, it, I think it makes a very nice, well-rounded meal if you do. And we are going to add our potatoes to our broth also. Uh, but not until our ribs are cooked a little bit more. 
these will have to be in our broth for for a while uh, depending how your meat cooks I've noticed differences between uh, meats in America and meats in Poland how they uh, how um, tender they are and how long they they cook so we're gonna give this uh, a few minutes and then we'll talk more as you can see my ribs are nice and brown on the on the meatier side this is good enough I'm gonna turn this off and I'm gonna transfer all my ribs into my pot and this is just starting to boil here and this is if you're this is a, a, a day that you're at home and you're just thinking what to do for dinner you can start this in the morning set the pot and then go do your thing go do a little bit of work if you're working from home or uh, if you're on if this is a weekend go do other, th other things and just kind of keep an eye on the meat and when it is nice and falls off the bone my mouth's watering then we can proceed with adding uh, the potatoes actually the potatoes can go in a little bit sooner when the meat is still a little bit of firm and uh, the potatoes will only need probably 10 minutes so just kind of keep an eye on it and we'll come back when our broth is coming together I do need to add a little bit of salt the ribs had a little bit salt a little bit of salt on it but it's probably not enough for two quarts of water so I'm adding uh, probably not not a full teaspoon and then we can judge it later once we taste it and there's a little bit of salt in the cabbage also so we don't want to overdo it um, but this is going to be a great start to our to our soup so I'll see you in a bit my soup has been on the stove for a little while the meat is nice and tender I checked the meat and right before uh, look it's just gonna fall off the bone uh, when it was almost to being that way I added the potatoes diced <clears throat> and they cooked up in my broth for about 12 13 minutes so that that will depend kind of on your dice but we want the potatoes cooked before we add our cabbage mouths watering already <laughs> thinking about it uh, and now the final step so I'm adding everything juices in I'm not even cutting the cabbage. If you don't like the long strings of cabbage, you could dice it or not dice it. Do a little rough chop, in them, but I'm not gonna worry about it because I have laundry going and <laughs> I don't wanna waste time. So I'm just dumping this in my soup and from two quarts that we started with in the beginning, I ended up with a pot full of soup that is meat and taters and cabbage and this will take another 15-20 minutes for the cabbage to be soft and give out a little flavor to our soup and we're ready to eat after about 15 minutes of cooking the soup with cabbage in it our soup is done I added another uh, teaspoon or so of salt so give it a taste and uh, see if it needs a little bit more uh, and if so add little bit by little and then give it a stir and taste and the soup should be salt will just bring out the flavor of the soup more so just kind of judge it on your own and then I have um, dried marjoram here and I'm gonna add a good sprinkle probably a tablespoon what I like to do is um, put it in my palm of my hand and just kind of rub it before I add it to the soup it kind of breaks up the uh, the herb and it gets the flavor out so that goes in and our soup is done I'm gonna give this a stir so let me spoon this on to my plate to show ya ho 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 our cabbage soup our sauerkraut soup called kapushnyak is a nice hearty soup thick let me get a piece of ribbon there you can see bacon in it a little bit more broth oh, 
right? And look, look at the meat in it. It's nice and tender and it's falling off the bone. You can serve it to your family and friends and they love it. Do you want to taste? Mm. It's deliciously sour. I'll get your salivary glands going. I'll let you know it's really tasty. I hope you try this at home. I hope you like my channel. Please subscribe so I know to make more videos. Check out my merch store. Get some aprons and t-shirts. Check out my book. Christmas book. Little tiny mini book with 30 recipes. Link for it in uh, the video description below. You can buy it on Amazon around the world. It's super cheap now, around five bucks. So check it out and come see me again and smudge nego.